Oh, may I call you Stephen? Is that okay, Mr. Grant? Sure. Either way. Sure. All right. All right. Yeah, sure. Fine. All right. All right. Well, Stephen, thank you for jumping in. Thank you for talking with me for a few minutes on this new episode. I usually start out with just naming a few titles that folks have worked on uh, just to give context for listeners out there that might be driving somewhere and are going, OK, what's this now? Um, so, of course, Punisher being one of those books that mm -hmm. is big time that you're known for. Whisper as Whisper. well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've done some work in the world of RoboCop as well with adaptation. Uh, the only thing I ever did for Vertigo never got published. So, Oh, I said, I said RoboCop. Is that right? Oh, RoboCop. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you said Vertigo. Sorry. So there's an unpublished work of yours out there that Vertigo... Oh, there, there, are, there are piles of unpublished works of mine out there. That's, oh, that's my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And now also, if I've read correctly, you have a particular connection to young readers as well, because did you write some Hardy Boys books? But I under wrote, a slightly different name. I wrote Hardy Boys Case Files, which was aimed at, like, young teen boys. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was ba basically they wanted to revert. This was at, um, in the 80s and early 90s, and they wanted to repackage um, the Hardy Boys as sort of uh, uh, two man boy against war against crime stories. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so very action packed for the Hardy Boys. Yeah, well, uh, they got less and less action packed as, we, as it went along. The early, <laughs> the early books, the early like six books were pretty action packed, but then the uh, I forget who was Bantam Books, I think was publishing them. Yeah, I was yeah. getting more and more nervous about you know that kind of material in a preteen book or a gotcha. teen young teen book. So, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, this, well, we. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say this was long before like Hunger Games, you know. So. <laughs> <clears throat> right, right. Yeah, yeah. The, the the edgy content that seems to grab young readers for sure. Um, yeah. So um, we could certainly talk Hardy Boys and Mysteries, but I know that I promised you a comics centered edition. So curious no, we about can talk either. I'm I'm easy. So. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Curious about what drew you to the written word, the world of comics, the world of mysteries. Um, what was that initial sort of spark that inspired you to create? Well, I just always read books and comics. You know, I mean, I, I actually started reading books when I was about four and uh, comics when I was seven. So. Um, and. You know, I was it, I was just always reading them. So, and, and when you read enough, you start thinking into, especially when you're reading comics, you start ideas for stories come into your head. You know, uh -huh. all through my, you know, from from when I was like eleven on, I was always, you know, I was creating my own characters, like a lot of kids do, creating my own characters, thinking up storylines for for characters that I read and loved. Uh -huh. You know. Um, and it's not like I sat down and thought, okay, today I'm going to come up with a Superman plot. It's just story ideas would pop into my head. So, you know, and I basically one thing led to another, but it all started with reading, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Were you one of those and, kids and it that just kept kind a... of became. Oh, sorry. Hmm? No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, were you one of those kids that kept a notebook? Not per se. I kept it all in my head. Ah. You know, I'd occasionally sketch out things. I, you know, I'm a terrible artist, but you know, when I was very young, I would sketch things on pieces of paper. But I don't know whatever happened to any of them. But uh, by and large, I just kept it all in my head, which which is helpful actually. Yeah. If you can remember things in your head, you're doing pretty good. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what was that journey like from sort of creating as a young fan to then creating in the published comics field and published works field? Uh, kind of chaotic. Yeah. It was never something I actually planned. Once I reached, you know, college age, it wasn't really something I ever planned to do. Mm -hmm. um, it was, well, I before I went to college, I, I was... This was early 70s. I was reading 
I was much more interested in underground comics at that point and was actually trying trying to get stuff published in underground comics and almost succeeded. And then uh, 1973, I was at Dennis Kitchen was the publisher of Kitchen Sink, which was one of the big three or four underground comics publishers. And I had met him on an air on an airplane of all things. And um, and he lived, I lived in Madison, Wisconsin. He lived in Milwaukee. And um, so I started like just pitching things to him and he was going to publish something. And then all of a sudden the Supreme Court basically shut down underground comics with their obscenity ruling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that meant publishers really couldn't publish because they, underground comics publishers really couldn't publish because none of them could afford to face 4,000 different lawsuits in, in every locale. Mm -hmm. And you could see people just gearing up for it. And um, and I was in Dennis's, Dennis's office when the Supreme Court announced their rule, their thing on television. So it was very interesting. And but that was it for that. And then I just sort of receded into fandom and met people, you know, uh, went went to little conventions around, you know, there was like a a weekly convention, I'm um, not a weekly, a monthly convention in Chicago, the friend of mine who actually sold back the issue comics and I would go down to every, you know, I'd help him work. And I met people there who were doing fanzines. And so I started writing for fanzines. And uh, those people uh, ended up working in comics and dragged me along with them. I wasn't really intending to do, to do comics, certainly not Marvel comics or anything like that. I yeah. I really yeah. didn't have that much interest in it at that point. But mm -hmm. then, uh, well, Roger Stern was one of my good friends from, from that. And he ended up as an editor of Marvel Comics and took over a line of comics that was just ridiculously behind because uh, Marvel was in editorially in complete shambles at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took this over and I happened to be going into New York at that point because I'd go in every like two three times a year just to, for something to do and normally I would stay with I would just crash on his sofa because that's what we did when we were young broke college students and <laughs> right. um, and uh, so I called him up one day on early in 1978 and said hey Roger uh, I'm coming in over the weekend is it okay if I stay with you and he said well when are you come when are you going to be here uh, I said, uh, yeah, Sunday night. He said, well, good. Be ready to write an issue of Marvel 2 and 1 on Sunday morning, on Monday morning, which was like, huh? <laughs> Prior to that point, Roger and I had both kind of agreed that perhaps my sensibilities weren't the best fit for Marvel Comics. And so I went and did it. And, you know, I, it was a fluke as far as I was concerned. It was the only thing I was ever going to do. And uh, typed out the ply. He I wrote out the voucher for, you know, about three weeks later, a check comes in the mail for me. I thought, I'm blowing this up. Because <laughs> it wasn't much money, but it was a lot more than I was making at the time. So I thought, maybe there's something in this. Maybe I should, like, start writing comics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't just writing comics. And... I was writing for like music magazines and things like that because that's what I was actually doing in Madison at the time. I was writing for for uh, music and uh, cultural papers and things like that. So, uh -huh. so uh, you know, and it just one thing led to another, and I, I never really had a plan or anything. It's just it, things developed, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Years later, here we are. Yeah. So. Uh, are there particular elements of a story that sort of capture your attention that um, you're more interested in writing than others and thinking of, of comics, but also what you mentioned there about some of the cultural pieces that you were writing at the time? Well, um, yeah, well, there, there's there's the idea that you're trying to say something. You know, I mean, I, I, I've i always preferred to write things where I had something to say, uh, you know, um, and, and not every assignment, you you know, a lot of comic stuff, especially when you're breaking in and have to take whatever they give you or they don't give you more things, um, you don't necessarily 
have something specific to say about that. So you have to kind of work out ways to keep yourself interested, to figure out an angle to keep yourself interested. Like, for instance, I did an issue of Shogun Warriors mm-hmm. for Marvel, which was a series I had no interest in, absolutely none. And um, and so uh, Al Milgram, who was the editor, gave me the story Bible on the thing. And I knew nothing about Shogun Warriors, but it was like, OK, it's an assignment I have rent to pay. So, OK, I'll do it. And um, so I go through this and it's it stars two men and one woman and they all, you know, in ha- they command giant Japanese robots, <laughs> which is definitely not my thing. And uh, so I'm reading the story Bible and they've, there's all this description about the men and they're in, the only thing that is said about the woman in it is she speaks with unconscious poetry. And I'm thinking, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so uh, to keep myself, so, but this is what I hooked into to keep myself interested because I wrote all of her dialogue for the whole thing in haiku. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> you couldn't tell on the page, but if you like parsed it out, it was all in haiku. So, you know, that's, and so when I turned it in, I said, okay, Al, um, you can change anything you want to, but if you need her dialogue changed, tell me and I'll do it. And he was going, what? Okay, well, fine. You know, I don't think he changed anything, but uh, but yeah. So you know, that's the kind of thing you have to kind of like figure out hooks to keep yourself interested. So, um, but by and large, I mean, uh, it depends what stage of the story you're in. I'm uh, I'm more. I tend not to think in terms of like continuity and things like that. I mean, it's it's like it's the story that interests me, you know, mm-hmm. and the story involves char- character and plot and dialogue. But, you know, you come up with parts of it, different parts of it are important at different times. And there are, but there are some stories where you have like this great little bit of dialogue. You just want to get out there and you got it in your head and you just want to get that out there. And other things you've got, you know, you can think of this fantastic bit of choreography that you're dying to try to see if you can pull it off on the page mm-hmm. and things like that. Because in you know, certainly in superhero comics. I mean, a lot of comics is like, it, it, comics is a lot like screenwriting. It's not identical, but it's a lot like screenwriting in that you really have to think in terms of the choreography. Whereas when you're writing prose, there's a little more leeway on that. But you got to think visually all the time in comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it really depends on what part of the, of the work it, it's what stage of the work it's at and it, it'll it can change on the same page you know it can shift back and forth pretty rapidly so yeah. mm-hmm. now you mentioned um sleeping on roger stern's couch so yes. i'm curious about uh other folks along the way that were colleagues collaborators um some of those um positive memories of collaboration well, I was actually a pretty terrible collaborator. Uh, <laughs> past a certain point, I was a pretty terrible collaborator because, like I say, my my sensibilities weren't necessarily like in line with Marvel comic sensibilities, and uh, mm-hmm. and but uh, Mark Grunewald and I collaborated a lot in the early days on on a lot of like the Avengers and Spider Woman and things like that, and he dragged me into it mainly because he was from Wisconsin. He was from Appleton, Wisconsin. He was higher ranked at Marvel than I was, but but he would drag me into it, and uh, so I ended up you know doing uh, co-writing a lot of things with him and with uh, uh, Ralph Macchio and other people. But but by and large, after a certain point, I really. Um, in terms of writing stuff, I just had such specific things in in the time that I wanted to do that I didn't really feel. And I'm still this way. I really don't feel like accommodating other people that much. It's just kind of like you get. The, I mean, it's not that I mind it in theory, but in practice, you just kind of end end up in this sort of pulling. You know, you're you're kind of trying to pull away from them while you're trying to work with them and. Uh, yeah. And also after a while, this this was the other irritating part, since they were all editors, since most of the people I worked with were editors or assistant editors um, at the time, and I was the freelancer, um, they had tons more work to do than I did. And so I would end up doing a lot of the work. <laughs> so and, and after a while, I thought, you know, I why, why am I just, 
you know, I, I, I don't know why I'm doing their work. I should just be doing my work. And so, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, so in that regard, I mean, I got a lot of artists I'm really happy to have worked with, but in terms of other writers, I'm, uh, you know, more or less ambivalent about it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I enjoyed it at the time for the most part. I enjoyed it until I didn't, but, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, but it's not so much the writing that, that I remember best about them. It's the palling around with them that I remember the best. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, curious about going back to the, the Hardy Boys and writing prose for younger readers. Um, curious about what that's like for you, what, what it is about prose that uh, you enjoy as well. Well, I mean, I actually don't like prose all that much, although I've been doing a lot more of it lately. Um, because there, there's a lot more connective tissue that you need in prose that you don't, you know, that the art handles in comics that you, you know, you figure it out, but you don't have to go into great detail on it. Whereas uh, in some ways, it's a lot more work to do that in prose where that's kind of the drag part of it. You know, it's like, it's like you want to get to the, the clever bits of dialogue and the uh, sure. and and the idea you know you just want to get to the idea behind it and you can't go straight to the idea in prose <laughs> which is you know i wouldn't call it a problem but it's it's not my hasn't been my forte but you know but on the other hand not having to cooperate with other people is always kind of fun you know it's like, <laughs> I, again, it's it's you know just being able to do it at my pace, to do what I want to at my pace, and uh, and get it out there. But uh, my biggest problem with prose is that I never really know whether I'm doing it well or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, be, because you don't know if. I mean, you kind of develop a sense for it, but but I've always felt with writing that if you think you know what you're doing, you probably don't. <laughs> um and and it's hard to judge exactly how overboard you're going on on the description i mean you can catch things like purple prose but in terms of description whether you're doing it well enough whether whether it's tactile enough for the reader or whether you know as a lot of you can it can be very aggravating let's put it that way it can be very rewarding and and i mean i did a prose story of few months ago for a sword and sorcery thing and i'd never actually i grew up reading sword and sorcery but i never actually wrote a sword and sorcery story before and uh stayed completely away from elves and things like that mm -hmm. but uh there's much more in the ilk of conan than the lord of the rings but um that was you know loads of fun to write and just i mean that came out wonderfully from my point of view i don't know whether anyone else liked it or not but from my point of view i thought it was like terrific but um, and then encourage that encouraged me some that I could read it and think, well, this I didn't really go overboard on anything in this, or I didn't really underplay anything on this. So, you know, but those those are the problems with prose is that I never quite feel comfortable with the out. Uh, you know, it's rare for me to feel comfortable with the output. Mm -hmm. Even with the Hardy Boys books, I had you know it was like I I never really I never got any trouble on them. I mean, the editors seemed to like them, but I was was kind of like. Did I do this okay? Am I like, is the dialogue too repetitive? Do I have, do I have said too much in it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think Elmore Leonard was famous for saying, "Just say said." <laughs> he got that. He stole that from Ernest Hemingway. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that journalistic background. Some, somebody actually told, posted the all the Elmore Leonard stuff online and for me the a couple of weeks ago and asked my opinion and i just kind of like blew it off uh yeah. <laughs> i mean it's it's like i just said oh he stole most of that stuff most of that stuff he stole from uh, ernest hemingway and you know i mean i like i like elmore leonard's work in general but those rules are basically a way to write pulp fiction without it coming out sounding like pulp fiction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true this is true. Yeah, so it's it's not really a, a good way to write. It's a good way to write pulp fiction. <laughs> true, <laughs> yeah. a a particular flavor for sure. Yeah. Um. So curious about, and this 
can be taken up in a variety of ways. Uh, curious about the creative spaces that you're working in now. What has your creativity sort of churning? And uh, some folks have said music. Some folks have said still doing comics. Some folks have said painting. So just curious what that well, is I'm, for you. I'm still doing I'm still doing comics. I've actually been doing gobs of them recently. Nothing's come out lately, but uh, I wrote a whisper graphic novel that should be out next year sometime. It's Wonderful. being drawn now. I just did a big project for whatever Valiant is. It's either Valiant or Alien Books. I'm not sure these days, but for Valiant, um, I've got you know various things that have been accepted around that I haven't gotten around doing. Um, I'm working on a couple creator-owned projects, uh, a crime book and a um, and a science, more or less science fiction book with two different artists, one each, and um, and you know just base and writing another uh, another in this sort of the care with the sword and sorcery character that I did before because Dan's putting out another trade and he wants me to uh, another one. I'm not really sure what I'm doing on that one yet, but I'm I'm doing it. And, uh, you know, basically just doing whatever I feel like at this point. But mainly I, I gravitate toward crime comics at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Not that I have a great love. of Everyone thinks I have this great love of crime fiction and I don't especially. <laughs> I, like a, I like some of it, but I don't have this. You know, it's it's like people ask you, well, well, what's your favorite? You know, what's your favorite album by whatever group? And it's like it's like it doesn't really. Or what's your like? What's your favorite song? Well, what are you talking about? My favorite song. It's like it varies from minute to minute. You know, <laughs> like, um, I you know it's it's like I'm I'm not really sure I understand the question anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, yeah. looking forward to more whisper. Um, looking forward to the create your own work. And is there a particular web space or social media space? where uh, folks can follow along well right now i, I do have a web page that has nothing on it so i'm not going to mention that right now it's like one of those projects on my list that i have to get to and um uh twitter at yes that's stephen grant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um uh what's what am i on uh, i'm i'm on facebook as stephen grant but um I don't know particularly what the hand I I couldn't tell you what the exact handle is on Facebook. Yeah, um, yeah. but uh, but I well, give me a second and I'll tell you. Hold on one second and I'll tell you. Absolutely, and I, I'll be glad to to link it as well. Yeah, but those are the two main places I can be found at, or I can be uh, contacted at yes that Stephen Grant at Outlook dot com. Oh, fantastic. So let me see. Well, let me see what's up here. Uh, I see you're listed as Stephen Grant, and it looks like look for the look for the emoji with the mummy oh, costume. Actually, I have to change that out because that was the Thanksgiving emoji. But but it's it looks like the, it's the same head. It's a different body on that. <laughs> the, the body is is in a black shirt and black pants and black shoes. So. So on on the one that will be up in about ten minutes. So <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll make sure to to link the Facebook there. And uh, yeah, have we missed anything in the talk through that you want to make sure to share? Oh, I don't know. Um, oh, uh, what I was going to say about crime comics is that I don't have a great that great a love of crime fiction, but I find that it's useful for saying the things that I feel like talking about. So that's why I uh, that's why I am drawn to crime to writing crime comics. So love that, love that. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully crime prose fiction shortly. That's on my list of things to do. So fantastic. Well well looking forward to it. And thank you for spending some time talking with no me. Problem. Yeah, glad to have you back anytime. Oh, no problem. Me too.